Okay, I wasn't expecting this, but apparently I've got to build my new keyboard. <laughs> yeah, I can hear bits moving around inside. So I've got the keyboard kit and the key caps. These are really nice. Can't wait to see those. But uh, let's open this up. A lot of mechanical keyboards I looked at aren't wireless. This one is. Oh, we only have to do the keycaps. That will make the start of this a lot easier. Oh, dude. <laughs> okay, so I've been on the hunt for a metal keyboard. Like solid, oh my goodness. That is solid, bro. <laughs> so this is my first possible switch keyboard. I bought this tool because it was recommended online as like a good one to have. And they give you the same thing. Okay, this is my first ever switch pool playing game of operation. Oh, what? Oh, that's simple as. Oh, check out these caps. This is a lot. So these keycaps are blank on the top, but the front face has the letter. And I just noticed it's got the transparent, like the double shot. So it's still gonna light up RGB. That's awesome news. Let's put all the keycaps on so we can do a stock sound test. Then we'll pull it apart and do some mods. So I put the delete key on and realized it didn't sit right. Ugh. That one's too high. Is there another delete key? Found there's actually four delete keys. This is because each row has its own height and angle. I need a home key. Oh. Oh, that looks so good. Oh, my dude, that is, that is awesome. Now I've got this user manual at my side. It's been essential for navigating all the different key commands and key presses. Uh, for example, after plugging into your PC, function tab will enable wide mode. Function Q, W, or E will switch between the three Bluetooth paired devices. So you can have three separate devices here. And function R puts it into the 2.4 gigahertz dongle. Battery life has been about a day on either of the wireless modes. However, that's with full LED brightness. You can dim it down or turn it off. And I'll pin a comment after further battery testing. Uh, being a 65% keyboard, you're probably thinking, how do I access the missing keys from a full size? Well, holding down the function key enables a second combo layer. So this is a action like your F1 to F12 keys. There's some media keys here. Uh, and over here we have our example function page up. We'll do print screen. In the AJAZ driver software, you can further customize the function layer to your preferences. You can even do mouse clicks or set up custom macros. The only keys that you can't customize are highlighted red as these are reserved for system commands. There are 18 different lighting effects built in. You can change the RGB, you can change the different wave directions and many colors, as well as dim the brightness to your liking. Now, I picked out this keyboard from WhatGeek. They sent me an email to see if there was anything I liked on their site. And this was love at first sight. Like the clean keycap colorway. Oh, so I'm real grateful they sent me the Ajaz ACO67 to get a taste of the custom keyboard world. All right, dude, it's tear down time and uh, I've got some switches. We wanna custom mod this thing. How sick. Got this mouse mat, which has like a soft cork back. Teeny little switch, turn her off. That's so cool. I feel like we're meant to remove all the switches and stuff before we pull it apart. Oh, bro. I don't know how custom key dudes do this thing. A lot of time spent pulling apart and putting things back together. It is pretty therapeutic though. Might just put some music on. You get to see a nice little time lapse. <laughs> Included hex wrench. Yeah, I really like this gold hardware. It matches the brushed brass plate quite nicely. Ooh, wee. Ooh, this is cool. Keyboards are like ogres. They've got layers. <laughs> is all the weight just coming from this brass plate? Yeah, okay. Man, that's a beautiful piece of metal there. All right, I'm gonna be honest, I'm gonna straight look up the keyboard to tell you what all of these different rubbery bits are. So from the bottom up, we have the brass counterweight, the aluminium base, a 2000 milliamp hour battery, 
a thick sheet of porum foam to isolate the metal base from the PCB, a thin sheet of IXPE foam to separate the PCB from our switches, and another thick sheet of poron foam to isolate the polycarbonate positioning plate. And so effectively, every hard surface on this keyboard has a soft piece of foam to isolate it which is intended to create a deep thock sound, opposed to the high pitch, cheap, plasticky sound of other keyboards. You can then take it a step further by customizing the switches. Here we are. But before we can hear what these custom switches sound like, let's hear from today's sponsor. If you're working on a project and need metal CNC'd, a custom PCB, or parts 3D printed, then head to PCBWay.com, where you can simply upload your file, select the material, color, and quality, and have an instant quote for it to be created and shipped to you. Big thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring today's video. I just realized I still have my headphones on. The power of aware mode. Now, before I put this back together, there's a couple mods I'm going to do, starting with the force break mod. I've seen this on many keyboard videos, simply taking some masking tape or painter's tape and applying it between the contact surfaces of the two aluminum shells, with an aim to reduce the resonance between the two materials. I'm also going to do the tape mod, which is applying three layers to the back of the PCB, which would help mute the keyboard sound. Due to this PCB having KL hot swappable switch mounts, we can simply plug in our preference. For me, that's a tactile switch. Oh, what? That's like a opener? That's cool. These AJAZ Kiwis are tactile switches, meaning there's a physical bump you press through at the actuation point where a key press is registered. Now the stock AJAZ Melons are linear, so these are smooth all the way through. The general rule of thumb is that linear for gaming, given the fastest response from no resistance, and tactile for typing. My personal preference is tactile, but it's always best to try for yourself. Installation is super easy, but I did have to pry up the positioning plate a couple times to get it to snap in place. Dude, this keyboard, something else. I've been afraid to dip my toes into the water of custom keyboards for a good reason, because now my brain is like spiraling like, whoa, what else could you change? Like you can do anything, right? But for my first keyb, as the cool kids say it, this thing is phenomenal. Like the weight is something else and the feel and the sound. I don't know if marble is the correct term that people would use for it, but it just feels and sounds marbly. Like it's just so nice. The only thing I wish is that the color matched my headphones and OP1. Like if it was closer to the silver white, then I'd be really happy, but it's a stunner. And uh, <sighs> just look at this thing. So then what's next to my keyboard benches? Well, I want to use today's sponsor to custom CNC my own aluminum shell for a keyboard build. This isn't a keyboard channel, but I've been bitten by the key bug. I can see more in my future. <laughs> if you liked today's video, thumbs it. If you loved it, sub it. And I'll see you in one of these. Like when I made a custom 3D printed and laser cut keyboard for my friend. Check that one out. Bye.